Hey everybody, it's Julianne. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my home here in Santa Monica, California. And welcome to part three of four of my quarterly series I put on the channel, giving you guys a tour of my current collection. It is spring 2019 and I'm so excited to share with you guys all of the updates that I have currently in my studio. I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you love seeing me dress in vintage. I know I'm always in work clothes whenever I'm filming, but I do teach every day and I actually taught this morning. But I wanted to go ahead and get glammed up for today's tour. The weather, bright and sunny here in Santa Monica, California. I thought it'd be appropriate to wear my vintage play suit, which is absolutely adorable. It is a one-piece play suit which I got from a vintage thrift shop in Las Vegas, in downtown Las Vegas. Vintage hat is actually a really cool find that I got on Haight Street in San Francisco in one of my vintage thrift shops that I love going to every time I'm in the so place. Before I go ahead and talk about everything that is currently living in my studio, I want to give you guys a quick overview and give you guys all of the updates on what's been going on in my studio. A quick little overview of my space and as you can see it is already on the dark side. I'm standing right in the front of my doorway where my patio flows in and out. My patio door open of my entryway to my home because I'm able to enjoy the plants inside and outside all at the same time. There's not much light coming through this space. Unfortunately, there's only really one good window that brings natural sunlight, which is going to be the window by my kitchen area. And the window above my bed pretty much doesn't have any light coming through because there's a big tree that is over my home that creates a lot of mess. I have a lot of work ahead of me. My patio is filled with pines from the windy day when I left to San Diego the other day. So I'm gonna have to clean up the space before I do part four. I would like to film that too for part four of my patio tour, but it's looking kind of sad right now because of all of the wind coming through the space. It just looks really so sad. Whenever I do travel, a bunch of my plants do come outside into my patio so they can get natural sunlight because once I close the window down in front of my kitchen area, there's pretty much not really much sun coming through this space. That blue light there is my grow light and I have it on my stand. And I've talked about my grow light in a previous plant haul so now you can see where it lives. But pretty much there is no light coming through whenever I am traveling. Everything is closed down. I bring my plants outside so they can get natural sunlighting. So they do go in and out from time to time. And I feel like if it's a really good sunny day, I like to bring them outside so they can get some nice sun. So let's go ahead and give you guys a quick little overview of what this space looks like. And I'll walk you through each and every So here is a quick little overview of my studio. I absolutely love how I'm able to have more plants in my home this year compared to last so before year. Before I go ahead and talk about all of the plants that are currently living in my studio, I want to give you guys the update on what my place looks like and how I styled it with the new furniture pieces. So as you can see right away, I have my beautiful love seat here and this thing is gorgeous. I love it so much. This is the fourth one that I ended up ordering online. I can't believe it took one month to arrive here. I have my pillows that my grandma made for the channel on there along with one of my throw blankets which i got from marrakesh morocco so that's my little love seat i love it it's tufted it's like that dark charcoal gray velvet it's so me and actually it matches like my headboard which is rhinestone studded as well as my statement chairs here which i've had for a couple of years it's like a white creamish and it has if you look really close there is silver in it and i love the studs as well so i can't believe that that worked out so great and then right away you also see that i added my vintage wicker basket so wall these baskets came from arizona from a handful of thrift shops that my grandma and i thrifted over the fall i love it i've had it for six months just waiting for my love seat to arrive and then i just styled it like in the middle of the night and i just kind of freestyled it i think it looks perfect now, unfortunately, my Paris painting, which you see right there on the ground, lived on this wall, and now I have no idea where to put it. I absolutely love my Paris painting, so I have to figure out what to do with it. And as you can see, I have three plants on each side of my love seat to give it a little bit more jungle vibes. I still always have one or two plants on top of my bare coffee table. So here's my coffee table, and... It's silver, it's vintage. I sprayed him. He was originally green. And when I thrifted him, I had to make him match my aesthetic. So I sprayed him silver. Had him now for a couple of years. And he is lying on the top of my vintage thrifted handmade rug from Marrakesh, Morocco. I love the pop colors and I am in love. My vintage bear coffee table is lying on this really awesome carpet that is super, super old. I can't believe I found it. It was like a needle in a haystack in Marrakesh, Morocco. I absolutely love that carpet. It's that nice pop neon colors. 
love a vintage thrifted rug and then I have my Colleen rug from Marrakesh Morocco next to it. I have little Ebby's bed here with her toys and I just have like a little ottoman in the center which houses a bunch of her toys and some extra pillows and so that's kind of the vibe of this section here. I made it work. I still have my mirror tray with all of my travel trinkets on there and the lucky bamboo that my grandma got me when she was here. I, I always have one plant on top of my coffee table. It switches throughout the weeks. So for now, I just have so this one. This is the way how I decided to style this section and make it work for a studio that with no well, lighting. As you can see, this is probably the best lighting my studio gets at any point and given time of the day. This is the layout I decided to go with for my studio with my new love seat. Sound off down below, guys, if you have a better idea on how I could go ahead and utilize my furniture and still have space. I feel like this is the best layout and still be able to have a handful of plants in my home. So moving along to this section, you now see my DIY stand that Kira and I did when I first moved into my space. These are actually for all of my kitchen jars, but you will see in a second, I now have a baker's rack and this got moved out. And instead of housing glass jars, it now houses plants. And I decided to put it in front of my bed because I love laying down in my bed and seeing plants. And then if you look here, right above my bed, I decided to put four hanging plants here. And I really love being able to have plants all around me. Now these Hoyas, they do go out every week to get better sunlight. There is light a little bit coming through as you can see right now. But for the most part, I do bring them out every week so they can get better sun. I just love having them above my bed. I absolutely bed. love the update on my bed. So thank you, Grandma, so much. She was really kind and sweet to surprise me with a new comforter set that she wanted me to have for my spring 2019 tour. As you can see, Abby is enjoying the new comforter set. I don't think she even realized that we're filming. And <laughs> she's so cute. I'll go ahead and I'll move my Moroccan blanket so you can see what it looks like so this is what the comforter looks like i absolutely love it came with two pillowcases and i think it's absolutely That's adorable the current look of my bed i really love the comforter set so thank you grandma so much ebby is enjoying it as you can see and then also another thing that i added into my space is that diffuser which you see right next to ebby on the little side table and I got one plant there. So that's like the little update of my bed. Love that so much. I'll go ahead and I'll break everything down in a second. Another thing that I also did for my space was right on the top of my plant gang, I decided to put one hook in my ceiling so that I could do a three tier hanger, which I absolutely love. So that's a little update of that. So as you can see, my plants then also got an upgrade and you can see how I utilize my grow light. I have one, I probably might get another one. The lighting, this is probably the best point of view guys, but I recently got me a little baker's rack and I love it because I don't have a full kitchen. I was struggling cooking and it was just really stressful for me to just do anything in this part of my studio for food. So now that I have this baker's rack, which I absolutely love, I will go ahead and link it in my Amazon store if you're interested. I can now house plants on the top part of my baker's rack, which I think is perfect. And this is my newest thrift in my home, my vintage wicker bench, which I got in Poway about two days ago thrifting. You'll see it in an upcoming haul. Love that so much. And then I just have one plant hanging on this window. But this window, guys, is like the only window that I have that has beautiful natural lighting, which is unfortunate. So that's a little update on this part of my space. I absolutely love all of the different places where I can style plants. about the plants that are currently living around my love seat. These are the ones that I'm choosing to style with at the moment. I may go ahead and kind of play with the design of the plants and switch them out with others in the future. But these are the ones that I went with. For the inside so of my let's go ahead and talk about the plants I decided to style around my love seat. Unfortunately, because I don't have a lot of natural lighting coming through my home and lots of windows, I just decided to go with three plants on each side to still have some kind of jungle vibes in my home. Because if you watch my previous plant tours, I didn't have like this setup in my home ever before because it just stresses me out not having a lot of light in here. 
I decided to put one of my rubber plants on each side so you'll see them. They live here now. I have my variegated peace lily. My biggest here. rubber plant is in the back here, my burgundy rubber plant, which is so stunning. It's been featured on my Planting with Julian Plant Awards. Love that so much. And then what I did is to help me bring up like the levels of the plants, I put pots upside down to kind of help as little plant stands. So I know my grandma wanted me to go ahead and choose another plant for the back plant because she wanted something that takes up more real estate. And you'll see on the other side, I kind of have that going on. So we'll see, but for now, my burgundy rubber plant lives here and I love having it in my home. At one point, it was living on the other side of my bed. I just love having it inside my place. I think it's absolutely here. Strange. I have my baby spider plant. This is actually a baby I propagated from my mother plant. And it lives in a planter that I got, I think, from Ross's Las Vegas about two years so ago. So on this side of my love seat, I decided to put my other variegated rubber plant in front. So they're on both ends of my love seat. I love that so much. And then I have George, his propagated babies, in a medium-sized planter. Because I really want him in my space, guys, but he's so big, I can't afford to have him in my place. So I have the babies of him propagated and planted up here. And then back there, I have another philodendron just kind of taking up a lot of real estate there. So I love that. These are the plants I decided to put on this side of my love seat. And I just love the So job. I love the way how I decided to design the plants on this. You guys know I love white and cobalt blue. So as you can see, I went with that theme on this shelf to match the theme on my other shelf in my space. My original plant shelf in my home is a blue and white theme. And I wanted to go ahead and transfer that. To this theme here on this shelf so you will see a cobalt blue and white theme throughout i love that there's multiple plants in here that are fairly new to my collection and i love being able to blend my whole collection new and old all together so the plants that i chose for this plant stand i think work so well together it transfers the blue and white theme that i have on my other shelf in my studio here i have my business sense of varia and a thrifted popcorn planter i think i got this from west hollywood I also have my Caldex plant, which I absolutely love, and a Daiso Japan planter, which by the way, guys, I'm going to bring him down so you can see his little update. I put him on like a little trellis. I need to find something better for him, but for now, I just kind of have him velcro to that because he was in dying need of climbing up something. So that's his little update. As you can see, one of my prize babies is here. This is my string of coins. I'll bring him down so you can see him again. This was in my spring 2019 top 10. I love this one a lot. And that planter I got from, I believe, here in Santa Monica, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely love it. It's kind of interesting, the plants that I'm choosing here, like the string of coins. This silver dollar vine is another find that I got from West Hollywood as well. And then I have this succulent here, which I can't even remember where I got from. It might be from Las Vegas, guys. So if I can remember where I get the plant from, I'll definitely share. This is a thrifted planter that I got from, I want to say, Las Vegas. I have to drill up a hole in here. Here's another fun owl planter. I'm going to do animal planter collection soon so you can see. Really fun Hawarthia. Owl planter is a new find, which I got in Northridge, California. And this Hawarthia is actually from Lakewood. I don't know how I remember these things. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. This is a really fun Ripsalis that I got in Carpentaria. And I believe I got this planter from Home Goods in Las Vegas. And this is one of my sense of areas that I recently got from my Los Angeles flea market. And I love the ice cream planters. I bought them all from the 99 cent store. And then on this end, I have one of my Caldex plants. It's doing really good. This is a fairly new plant to this plant stand. It's been living on my other plant stand in my studio, but I decided yesterday to move him here. And then on the bottom end of my plant shelf here, I have one of my succulent babies. I think wild and crazy. I might have to transplant this. I need to get more turtle planters. Look at how cute that is. I believe I got this from Las Vegas. Another fun Ripsalis on the bottom here. And this is a Ripsalis that I got from Carpentaria. A lot of new growth, so it's doing good. And again, as you can see, I have the same style of planters throughout this shelf. So I love how that worked out. In the out. center and the bottom, I have my Twisted Sensevaria. I love this. I believe I got this from my neighborhood nursery here in Santa Monica. This planter I got from, I want to say Las Vegas Home Goods. Another fun animal planter, which I got thrifted in Northridge. 
I found this with Catherine. It was so fun. I can't believe it. This is a Gasteria, which I can't remember where I got, unfortunately. Um, it'll probably come to me. I see three babies here, so that's really cool. Love that a lot. My Pelia baby is now a mommy. You guys probably seen this on my top 10 plants. And it's in a cobalt blue and white plant that I believe I got from Las Vegas, maybe Home Goods. So I love a good cobalt blue and white. I have some Cressulas that I got as cuttings from the Bay Area from the host that I stayed with. And then this is a thrifted planter that I got in Arizona in the fall. So I love that. And then this is a rescue that I got from Las Vegas with my grandma. And this is actually a bowl that I got from Home Goods. So these are like actual dishwares for cooking and I just potted them up with plants and I drilled holes in them. So I like to do that. So both of these came from Las Vegas. I have more Haworthias in here. I believe I got these from Las Vegas. This is just a planter that one of my best friends Diana gave me. She's not into plants. And here's the last baby that I wanna go ahead and share with you. This is my Happy Bean. Now, if I didn't have this Happy Bean, which I got from Arizona for my $25 challenge haul, I would have gotten the Happy Bean in Las Vegas Walmart. You guys seen it. It was a lot more fuller. But Julian already has the plant, and it wasn't like one of those like hard-to-find plants where I will buy it. If you guys see, like with philodendrons, I'll repurchase them even if it's the same plant. I didn't feel that way about the Peperomia Happy Bean because I see it all the time. But that is currently living in a planter that I got thrifted in the bay when I was living in the bay. And it has like a cute little tray. How cute is that, right? Love that sauce. So that is all of the plants that are currently living in the front of my bed. What do you guys think? I can't believe it went from housing jars to housing what plants. You'll see in a second my baker's rack that is now replacing that real estate where this stand was is the best like thing I've ever done for my studio, for my kitchen area. So you'll go ahead and see that and how I have the plants on there. Let's talk about my little plant gang here. Into the frame, I have two sensivarias, a philodendron, and two ferns on the bottom, another philodendron here. On my hanger, which you'll see in a second, I have three plants, which I'll probably alternate from time to time. Let's talk about what's going on down here, and we'll talk about the hanger next. I do have my biggest sensivaria, which I got from Las Vegas, I wanna say a while back, and actually Kira has a cutting of this which is actually bigger than my mother plant believe that or not so it's living here and i love having it in my space i have my bento sensation and i love this thing i got this from my pasadena rose bowl flea market and it's in a planter that i got from poly home goods last week right next to it is my original panda philodendron it is crazy and wild i love this thing and i got this planter as well from las vegas home goods so it lives here in the plant gang this elephant is living amongst the jungle I love this thing. I got it from Las Vegas years ago for my apartment there and it's just been with me since This is then. one of my prized philodendron. It's, I believe this is a psyllium. I love this thing. It is so stunning. Believe it or not, I got this from Trader Joe's in Las Vegas two years ago. I can't believe it. It was like under $10. It's one of my favorite plants in my collection. There's lots of new growths here, so that makes me really happy. So as you can see here, there's lots of new growth. and. For the most part, I love having philodendrons on the top part of my plant gang. So this plant currently lives in the top and center of my plant gang and I'm just using one of my ghost acrylic chairs as a little plant stand. Here is a glassware that I have from my kitchen that I'm just upcycling into a little saucer so it doesn't ruin my ghost acrylic chair. So as you can see on this end, I do have two ferns. I love having ferns in my home guys because it just reminds me of Hawaii. So this is my asparagus foxtail fern. I've had it now for I want to say two years. I believe I got this in Las Vegas. And I have like this little owl living here. My grandma found this owl. And now it just lives in my home because you guys know I love white and I love owls. So it's just living in the planter there. And then at the end, I have my new, one of my newest ferns in my collection, the holly fern. And it just kind of lives on this end as you walk into the bathroom jungle. So that is my current plant gang. What do you guys think? I love the way how I was able to style this much plants in this section of my home. Again, as you can see, I'm facing my only window and I love being able to have as much plants as I can in my home. So this works out great that I'm able to have plants right here. No where I'm at in my studio, I can see this plant gang and it just makes me happy because if I could, my whole house would look like this if I had more windows. So as you can see on the top, 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 I do have one of my Hoyas up there. I believe that is a pink silver Hoya that I got from 
my Arizona $25 challenge haul. I have my Photos and Joy here, which is actually in a white plastic hanger, which is the same one that I have all of my ferns in in my bathroom, so it's lighter. Bottom of my hanger, guys, I decided to put my neon Hartley Philodendron in here because I think it's like the perfect place for it. It still gets natural lighting from my window and it's not in direct sunlight, which is one thing I didn't want for the pad. For a hot minute, it was living in my patio and then I decided to put it here. And I think that's like the best choice I did for the so plant. Let's go ahead and talk about the one plant here, which is where Ebby is sleeping next to. Look at her. She's so silly. So this is my one ponytail palm. I love this thing so much. It lives here. For the most part, when I'm out of town, I do bring it outside. In this top section, you see I have four of my Hoyas. So from right to left, this is my Las Vegas Hoya, which I recently talked about in my plant haul and planting with Julian episode. I believe this is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess because of its variegation. When I bought this plant, it was labeled as a Carnosa Tricolor in Las Vegas. I do see a little pink in it, so maybe, but I want to say this is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess because it's variegation. If you see here, this is a Hoya Carnosa Tricolor. So do you see how it is different in variegation as you can see? So I want to say that it was labeled wrong in Las Vegas. And this planter I got from Ontario, California. Love that. And then I also have my two Hoyas here in terracotta. So these planters here, both of them, they're terracotta, but different from the ones that you would get at your local garden center. These are from Daiso Japan, and they're not as breathable as your standard terracotta, which is kind of interesting to me. But so far, my Hoyas are fine in them. These are my newest hangers, which I recently got. And I'll talk about them in my upcoming haul. I love this so much that I had to purchase more so I could have more hanging and plants. As you see here in the center, I have just my regular Hoya Carnosa. It's all green. I believe I got this one in West Hollywood. And then here is another West Hollywood baby. My Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8 it is doing so, so good. If you guys are interested in any of the Hoyas that I do have, I do have babies I'm propagating in my greenhouse, so reach out to me. I absolutely love collecting them. So here's a quick little overview of the plant shelfie. Before I go ahead and talk about all of the plants, I will go ahead and turn off the grow light. sit here and talk about the plants one at a time. Starting with my tallest one, I'll bring him down. So here's my beautiful Hartley Philodendron. Guys, it's my like longest trailing plant ever. As you can see, it's pretty much touching the ground and it just keeps going and going and going. I have propagated from this mother plant so many times. This thing definitely completes the jungle vibes in my home. I love having it on my top shelf. Also another thrifted find. I picked it up for $20, guys, and it fits perfect in this space. So this is the perfect height for this beautiful Hartley Philodendron. I think once it gets more traily, I'll go ahead and I'll propagate it more and then I'm going to backfill this end so that it's more traily throughout the whole planter. I can easily just go ahead right now and kind of even out the so, trail. So as you can see, this Hartley Philodendron loves living with me, or I'm living with it. It is almost like two years old. I got it in Las Vegas, guys, for maybe under $10. This is one of the most easiest plants to grow. So if you are a beginner plant owner, and want a new plant, I highly suggest this guy. As you can see, it is a very fast grower, and I'll go ahead and eventually like, take all of its trails over the planter, and I'm pretty sure as I untangle it, it's going to get longer. This thing will get thrown underneath my shower for a nice mist every week, or I'll throw it underneath my faucet of my kitchen sink and it'll get a nice spray of water there but this thing is trailing so long guys i'm kind of interested to see once i untangle all the trails it, like how longer it's going to get so this is one of my favorite common house plants so if you guys are looking for one to add into your home i highly suggest this one and it's definitely jungle here is vine. the other plant that is living on the top and this is my asparagus fern which i got for probably like two dollars in las vegas two years ago and this planter i probably got from las vegas as well I love this plant a lot and I love the zen vibe it gives me. So this is probably going to stay in this planter. I may switch it out with one of my newest thrifted planters, which might work better for this type of plant aesthetic wise. So stay tuned. But for now, I think it looks perfect in this cobalt blue and white. We'll see. 
when I talk about my vintage thrifty planter, you'll kind of understand why I want to switch it out to maybe that planter for this plant. But I love this thing so much. It lives on the top shelf of my plant shelfie, which I think has been living on this plant shelfie ever since I got this. I don't know. I just love the dimension that it kind of just spews over and gives more real estate with green. I love how it fills up the real estate up there with more green with the height. So I love having that on the top. It's just one of my... Pepper Romeo Obtusi Folia Variegata cuttings. This actually fell off, I think, when it was super windy from my mother plant. I propagated in water and I recently put it into dirt. I didn't share me planting up this cutting on the channel, but I did put it into this planter, which I got from Daiso Japan just this week. So it's now living on my plant shelfie. I do have another cutting that fell off from my mother plant, which is behind there, propagating in water. Once that's rooted up, I'm going to stick it in here to make the plant Next cool. to that is my variegated Hoya Compacta. And I love this thing so much. There is multiple trails happening in here. I absolutely love my variegated Hindu rope. So it lives here next to my grow light baby that I love. It is my variegated Hoya Carii. And it's looking pretty good. These are actually two in one. So this is my first Hoya Carii. Variegata, and then this is my second one. I believe I got this one from the Bay Area. And I got this one in, I want to say, Los Angeles somewhere. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. And then here's another Caldex plant. Also in a Daiso Japan planter. And I believe this is some kind of ficus. So I love having ficuses in my home. You'll see. I recently added in another ficus that I got the other day. Down here in the same style planter different design this is from Daiso Japan and I just have my all green Hoya compacted here I have a lot of Hoyas so you'll see them throughout the collection and then I have my lucky bamboo that I got from downtown here in Chinatown and then here's my original Pelia baby which was this small when I bought him two years ago and I paid $100 for him and I was actually in Norway in Tromso doing the Aurora Borealis chase and Kira had to open up the mail and unbox it for me via FaceTime. I was so nervous but now it lives here and it's living in my thrifted planter that I got from Lomita in my recent San Diego trips that I've been going down for dance school. So here's another fun peperomia that I got recently and this is actually from Santa Barbara. I have it in an Ontario, California planter. So these are one of my newest babies. This peperomia is a marbled otusifolia. And I love this one. I believe I got this from West Hollywood. Can't remember. But it's living in a planter that I had for about two years. This is probably from Home Goods in Las Vegas. So I love having peperomias on this plant shelf. And on the bottom, I decided to put my two dracenas here, which I got from West Hollywood. It's three plants, I believe. And they're in those plastic planters that I got recently. And these just live on the bottom shelf. It does get some sunlight, but not a lot. So I just decided to put them right in front of Ebby's bowls. So these are living on the bottom part of that shelf. So this is what's currently living on my kitchen counter. I have this little cute wicker bench that has a handful of things. And then I have one Hoya Carnosa tricolor here. This particular hanger basket Catherine gifted me. And this is living in a terracotta that I sprayed white. One of my Hoya Cardosa tricolors. I think I've had this one for a long time. One of my original Hoya Cardosa tricolors. I have like four. It's one of my favorite plants. So here's my little vintage wicker bench that I thrifted two days ago. You'll see it in my April thrift haul. And it has a bunch of cool plants on here. Some of my favorites. And these are all rare plants. I have three of my newest Ripsalises in ice cream planters, which I got from Northridge. I love it a lot. My variegated string of hearts, which I got from Santa Barbara. And I have my Peperomia Hope, which was one of my birthday plants, I believe. And this is in a thrifted sugar bowl. And this is a thrift find that I got from Arizona. So I was able to put a bunch of 99 cent store planters with rare babies in them. I love the look and I love having this for my little kitchen area. It works out perfect for the aesthetic of my place. Here is my silver satin pothos. I love this thing so much and it's living in a planter that I want to say I got from Chinatown here in Los Angeles. So this is actually a cutting and it's doing pretty good. So it lives there. Here's another fun plant living on my baker's rack. This is one of my rescues 
that I got in Las Vegas in the trash. If you remember, I gave one to Catherine. So it's living in this planter. I want to say I got from Walmart. So it has real estate on my baker's rack. I do have another bamboo that is a living in a thrifted owl measuring cup. And then the last two plants here at the end is my variegated Obtusifolia variegata. And it's living in a thrifted planter I want to say I got in Las Vegas or here in Los Angeles. I can't remember. And I want to say this variegata Obtusifolia came from Las Vegas maybe around two years ago. I can't remember. The very, very end, I have my neon potos. I love this thing so much. It's trailing and it is living in a cobalt blue panther at the end of my baker's rack. All of those plants live on the top of my baker's rack and I think I love the plants that I was able to choose for that section. Again, it's in the cobalt blue and white theme. And then I'm gonna wrap up the video with this section here. As you can see, I have one of my rescues here from Kira and I love having this Dyphon Baccia on my dining table. It's in a planter that I got from Chinatown, Las Vegas. And this is the one plant that I decided to go with for my space, for my beautiful vintage dining table. I absolutely love having it in the center of it. So here is what it looks like up close with my lamp on because it was kind of dark. So you can see what's living on my beautiful vintage dining table that I thrifted. And I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick little overview of my beautiful vintage thrifted dining table. And this is a new rug that I recently got from one of my big department stores here in my neighborhood. And I think it works out perfect with my space. See, the aesthetic of it is perfect. My grandma and I found this material here in Venice, California. It's that white and silver aesthetic that matches everything else that is currently living in my space. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I'm going to end it here in front of my plant stand, in front of my bed. I hope you guys enjoyed the updated plant tour part three or four of my quarterly series that I like to bring on the channel, sharing you where my plant collection is and how I style plants in my home. As you can see, there's a lot of cool things that have happened to my space since I lasted a tour in my home. I now have a hanging planter. In the mix, I have plants hanging over my bed. I have a shelf in front of my bed full of plants. My baker's rack, as well as my dining table came out instead of being in the corner. I have a love seat with my vintage thrifted basket wall. There's so many cool things that happened to my studio since I did my end of the year plant tour for 2018. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also, sound off down below. Um, what did you think about the updates that I did to my space? And I'm so happy that I'm able to have at least this much of my plant collection inside of my studio. As you can see, I do have a lot of plants in my bathroom. It gets really dark, so unfortunately, I can't have my whole studio jungle vibes, but I think I do a pretty good job working with my space, so I hope that inspires you. No matter you. what kind of living conditions you are living in, you can still have plant life. With that being said, stay tuned for some fun upcoming content that I'll be filming in a month for the channel to inspire you. Really excited about that project. So, as you can see, there has been so much things added to my collection inside of my home as far as for styling and just plants in general. My grow light is in full effect, my baker's rack. I mean, there's so many cool things that I'm able to now style plants with. And I love being able to have more green in my space. If I had my way, my whole inside of my studio would look like something what my bathroom and patio looks like, just filled with green. But I work with what I got and I'm pretty happy at where my collection is at right now inside of my home. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to stay tuned for part four of my quarterly series. We're going to end the plant tour for spring 2019 in my patio. I do have my beautiful water feature that you'll go ahead and see in my space. There's so much things happening in the patio with my beautiful new plants. You'll go ahead and see them styled in the patio. So stay tuned for that. Give this video a big thumbs up. Want to see me talk about my plant collection more just in general instead of on a quarterly basis. Maybe I can go ahead and just break things down like what's currently living on my plant stand, how it's doing and things like and that. If you're so new, welcome to the channel. I do daily videos on this main channel. I inspire you each and every day. I have over 400 videos on the channel. I can't wait to make 500. I think that's going to come really soon, Thank guys. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and all of my plants. You guys are awesome. And if you see any of the plants in my plant collection that you're interested in and I'm able to sell a cutting to you and not ruin the plant, I am definitely okay with that. I've done that in the past for many of you guys and I love having plant friends. You can reach out to me in a direct message with Planting with Julian on Instagram. And also, I still have my totes that my grandma handmade. You can also go ahead and purchase those. I will probably do a giveaway in the near future, maybe giving away one or two for the spring slash summer. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys soon. You can find more on my blog at ellajulian.blogspot.com. Until next time, aloha from Santa Monica, California, and all of my plants. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.